Kinds of Kindness, new film from Yorgos Lanthimos, which was, and this was actually shot, it was in the can before Poor Things opened. Um, like Horizon, uh, chapter one, the, uh, the Kevin Costner film, this is three hours long. And like Horizon, it has three distinct stories. Unlike Horizon, this is a huge amount of fun. So this reunites Lanthimos, Emma Stone, Willem Dafoe, cinematographer Robbie Ryan, composer Jerskin Fendricks, who's obviously really clicked with uh, with Yorgos Lanthimos. Uh, written with Lanthimos's regular collaborator, Estimus Filippo, who, if Paul Things and The Favourite were, were teamed with Tony McNamara, and that kind of gave them, I think, a, a bit more of a sort of human element. This is the writer with whom he worked on things like Dog So this premiered at Cannes, where Jesse Plemons won Best Actor. He is one of a central group of players who play different characters across a series of different, but thematically kind of interconnected stories. First story is called The Death of RMF. Plemons is uh, Robert Fletcher, whose life is strictly controlled by his boss, played by Willem Dafoe. Uh, he controls what he eats, what he, who he marries, who he has sex with. And one day he's ordered to, to run a man down and kill him. And he says, I can't do that. And then his life falls apart. The second story, RMF is flying. Jesse Plemons is a policeman who, Emma Stone is his, uh, his partner, Liz, who has disappeared, gone missing on a desert island, and then comes back having been saved. But he doesn't believe that it's actually her. He thinks it's like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And the third story, RMF eats a sandwich. Plemons and Stone are Emily and Andrew, who are members of a cult led by Willem Dafoe's Omni, who's looking for a prophesied figure who has the ability to raise people from the dead, possibly. There's also uh, recurrent roles for Maury Quali, um, Amadou, Ati, Hong Chao, Joe Allen, a bunch of other people, but that's the that's some central thing. So when the film was first put together, it was called And. And I did an onstage interview with Robbie Ryan, and I said, and what is it about? And he said, yeah, exactly. And he told me that in the original uh, assembly, they mix the three stories up. So if you think it's complicated now, it's now it's much more straightforward than it was when they were all messed up together. The tone is broadly absurdist, misanthropic, Kafkaesque, often cruelly hilarious. I mean, I think it's really funny, but I think it's really funny in the same way that Bo is Afraid is really funny. And I remember Simon sitting in the cinema with you with watching Bo is Afraid. And the more you didn't find it funny, the funnier I thought it became. So I think there is a, there's a crossover there with the you know with, with the humor. The stories are they're unconnected on one level, but they are linked by elaborately weird patterns of human interaction that are all really just exaggerations of, of everyday life. So there's the office schlub who will do anything to please his boss, but taken to absurdist levels. There's the unhappy husband whose wife will hurt herself to make him happy because he th doesn't think she is herself. There's the search for spiritual fulfillment that has all kind of, you know, car crashy implications. And the film playfully asks questions about free will. What does free will mean? Do we, we, you know, what are rules for? Um, what, what does it mean to be completely subjugated to someone else's whims? What does it mean to be free? In fact, there was an interview with Lanthimos in which he cited Caligula as an influence, not Caligula the film, which incidentally is coming out in a new cut in a few months' time, but Caligula the emperor, you know, who lauded it over everybody. And that's one of the things with the boss at the beginning, somebody just being in complete control of people. Despite the, the title, there is a distinct lack of kindness uh, on show, but there is in each story a desperation to please, to achieve validation by doing something that someone else demands, no matter how mad, like, you know, feeding your partner your own finger because they asked you to do it. And all the interactions are manipulative, weirdly joyless, sex is organized and prosaic, even for swingers. The nudity in the film is completely morbid. Devotion is murderous and twisted. Faith is weird. Uh, repetition is unavoidable. I think that the humor is of a piece with things like Dogtooth, Lobster, Killing of a Sacred Deer, with whom it was the same writer. And, you know, films in which people engage in these kind of weird, robotic, almost automaton-like human rituals. There is a gag at the very end of the film that I laughed so much at that I was still laughing at, as I left the theatre. All the performances are poised and arch. The design is pointed and uncomfortable. Cinematography is kind of weirdly alienated, and the and the score is there, you know, to put you on edge. I mean, I can imagine some people hating it. I really enjoyed it, but then I think I really enjoyed it because I really like Yorgos Lanthimos, and I found it funny. 
And I think if you don't find it funny, it would be very testing. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I think when you said absurdist and misanthropic, I think, <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs>